My goal tonight is to encourage you to become aware of all the art around you in all of our public buildings. So we begin, first of all, with um, the first artist, and he is West Frazier. And he was, in, he was actually the first artist invited by Betsy to come and stay at Spring Island, and he did a series of them, she was telling me. He is related to Charles Frazier in Hilton Head, the developer of Hilton Head. He now lives in Hilton Head, and we have nine of his pieces. She said this is titled incorrectly. He calls it the, the um, a Tabby Ruins Alley. And so we, we're going to have to change that. She just told me that today. So um, I think this is, is going to be in the book as well. So I'm sure we'll, we'll hear more from Lark when this book uh, comes out. So she will let us know. Um, now we're going to take a virtual tour of the sports complex and um, as you go in the door on the right you will see this piece in crustaceans and um, I Carl was over here and I said Carl you, can you recognize the grasses there and he said uh, no he didn't he couldn't recognize them I don't know are you good at that Chris recognizing grass <laughs> no. <laughs> um, anyway, just uh, weed. Could be weed. Um, so anyway, the, you go in to the right, and you can look and see. And I think what sh this artist did was take the actual grasses and put uh, the gold leaf over them, and then on the left, another <coughs> another uh, piece of type of art material, and they are encrusted in that surface. So I think that's where she got the name from. But I just made. I made that up. <laughs> uh, the Old House Cemetery uh, is displayed in the first restroom that you go to, uh, in the right to the right. And Beverly, we're still in the, we're still in the sports center. Sports. Okay. So you um, go to that into that restroom, and Beverly Buchanan is an African American artist from Georgia. And she um, came and stayed or talked with um, Bailey Simington and it told Bailey that she had heard that there was a slave cemetery on Spring Island. And so that led Bailey to investigate more and that's how we got the history trail and we do have some slave uh, <coughs> cemeteries and cemeteries there. So that's through Beverly Buchanan that she, and she this was her interpretation of what the slave cottages looked like at that time. A trillion path, and I think this still hangs in the um, alco first alcoves as you go into the sports center mm -hmm. after the machines. And this is my favorite place in Spring Island, mm -hmm. the trillion path. And we are very fortunate that we are still, still allowed to go there. The owners have given permission and Pam Raquel is in the process of making signs to guide you through there. So we do res have to respect that property. Um, that tree is still there on the right, the one with the um, hole in it. Mm -hmm. I think you can still see that. This is a, an early painting too, the early 90s. So uh, this is what it looked like, I guess, at that time. And you see the Easter lilies, yes. and they come out Easter time. April, yes. And um, I think this is a buckeye plant. I think. Does it, does it look like a buckeye? Okay. But anyway, that's sort of what so some of these works um, really are, have historical value because they t tell us what it was like early on. Of course, the Chapins know, but I mean, the rest of us might not. This is, and then also, I think in that alcove to the right, Dancing Crane, and Ellen Grantner, Grantner, Grantner I guess it is, is um, studied in China, and her art reflects this, I think the simplicity of this, 
and it's such a joyful piece that the bird is just ready to fly off the canvas and it's a beautiful light colors and so it's really a very beautiful piece then in the back by the um, massage rooms back wall is this one and you can almost if you stood around the rookery you could hear the the noise of the river rookery and this painting just just tells you that noise it just, just it just screams at you so i love this painting for that for that reason um and this one is in the ladies locker room sorry man <laughs> you can't see it. but this is an old piece uh, early 90s as well and it did have a big uh, ornate gold frame on it and I, I took it and got a more contemporary frame on it and uh, so this is hangs in there and back also those walls this is a um, cloth painting by um, Marietta Frazier that hangs back there this is red cabin uh, by Barbara Jones and um, I don't know if the cabin across the street was red at one time was that correct yes. so this is that cabin Yes. And now it's gray now, so I, I didn't recognize it. And apparently there was a tree on the right, con tree on the right, that died. Is that correct? I think they planted another one there. So this has a, has a historical value as well. And this is a pretty pastel by, by Caroline. Uh, this is, uh, these are um, I don't know where they're hanging. Michael Karras and, and a lot of people here know Michael Karras. They have um, paintings by him. He moved to the Low Country from the New England area, and you see the love of nature in his uh, work and the beautiful use of light that he has. Some some of you have his work in, in their house in your houses. And this is Marsh scene by Michael Karras, and this. It's hanging over there. It looks like it's a big painting, but it's actually the little one over there. And Betsy was telling me that that is the old barn before this one. It, this was before my time. And we were trying to figure out the road on the side is called the Trading Post Road. And so that's where the old barn was located. So this is uh, tells us a little about the history as well. I believe he does. Yeah. And he moved here after being a visiting artist here. Oh, so that's how, okay. We got him down here. Good. Uh, now we are in the uh, golf pass. So uh, this is it's a huge piece. And, I mean, it's, it comes out, it's bigger than usual. Uh, it's a beautiful uh, surround by Cynthia Brindle. And then along the wall, you'll see this uh, by Linda Fantuzzo. And the interesting thing here, it faces the, the scene that she painted. So if you look out the window to the right, you will see that scene. So that's kind of interesting there. And another one by her, and it's um, very pretty, the, the colors that she uses. Bobby? Yeah. Uh -huh. That's oil. Oil. That's an oil. That is an oil. Yeah, they both are oils there. Yeah, you can see, you can almost see this the brush brush goes there. This is Mary White, and she lives in Charleston, and she moved to the low or in Charleston area from um, I believe she she was from Ohio. And um, she got interested in the Gullah women, and so she, uh, some of you have gone to the ex exhibition down in Savannah, I think it was, of the occupations of the Gullah, of the dying occupations, and uh, she's, she's really a very famous artist now. And this is a watercolor. And this one is also by Mary White, and this is of the corner and Carl was here and he said, oh, that rose bush is still there, but we cut it down to low. He said, 
He said, I didn't realize it could be a, we could have a climbing rose bush there. So he's talking about putting a trellis there. And I don't know if that's the corner one. Do you know if that's, that's the, the corner one? Because today I was driving in and I thought, I bet that's the rose bush. So it's on the corner as you turn in. And this is Bailey's Rose by Janet Fish, and she's a nationally ranked artist as well. And um, I, so I was curious about the name, so I called Bailey. I said, Bailey, is, is that your rose? And she said, oh, yes. She said, Janet Fish stayed at her house when she was visiting. <laughs> and she was looking out my window and um, saw this Cherokee rose. And um, so she babysat her dog while Janet painted the rose. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, pardon? The Spring Island. Yeah, the Spring Island, sure. And so now we were, were lucky to enjoy Bailey's Rose. And this is a lovely one by Connie Winters. Where is it's that? just a it's a pretty doesn't relate too much to Spring Island, but it's pretty that's the one she uh, she gave to us. So we asked them to donate a piece that sort of represents uh, the sense of Spring Island, but sometimes they don't do that. Spring Island for us. Uh, Spring Glow, Spring Island by Sally Hughes Smith. It's a pretty one. This uh, is in the golf house as well. Uh, some of these are in the ladies' locker room. I think that's that one was in the ladies' lo locker room. And Spring Island Marsh, um, actually when Carl was looking, he, he knew exactly where this was, <coughs> which I couldn't pinpoint where it was, but it's somewhere on the island that she did. And this is uh, an interesting one, Patricia Miranda with the gold leaf. And this one hangs, um, as you look at the opening where the chefs are, the first opening, this one hangs on the wall of that, and, and if you look out directly opposite that, you'll see the two trees. It, it mirrors where it's located. And um, it's, it's, I like this one too, it's just interesting. And those trees look like that. If you look out while you're having lunch, you can see this. She was a New York girl who did these trees and had never seen these trees. She was New York. Oh, she, this you mean uh, Patricia? Patricia? Was from New York. And so she was uh, really impressed by these trees. Right. She Oh, yeah, so, is that, and it's, it's a lovely piece, and it does represent what, what it's facing there. And this one, uh, the, uh, probably these last ones were in the river house, but now have, uh, are in the storage closet, so during the re renovation. So that one hung, it hung in the uh, dining area. Uh, this is, um, I call it the pink moth because I can't pronounce the other thing. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, this is by uh, Joseph Shear. And the interesting thing about this, it has 67 million data points of high re resolution data. And he has collected and identified and printed thousands of moths from around the world. And we have other photographers represented Ben Ham, Walter, uh, Robert Millman, Tom Blagden, Betsy Chafin, the McIntyres, Peter Vanderwalker, who is related to cousin of Skip Vanderwalker. And um, the reason I, I can't show you those on the PowerPoint presentation because when I took a picture of the photographs, the photographs of the photograph, it doesn't come on. I couldn't get it to come on uh, very clearly. So, sorry about that. But you can see them if you look around, you can find them too. Uh, th these are interesting from the historical, historical point as well. Um, Bob Grenko is from Walterboro, and he did these fairly early, and so these rep represent some of the early um, Buildings and this one probably is not here anymore. What is the, what's the medium on these? These are pen and ink drawing. I don't know, Betsy. Do you remember where that was? 
You know, I, I honestly don't. I wish I could say I did. No, I didn't. <laughs> it's gone. It's gone now. But anyway, folks, and there's a, but we have more of those groups. But uh, Katie Lee is a really popular. Where is that right now? Uh, is that painting? Do you know? Uh, no. Um, I can't. Kathy, do you remember? Was that remembering seeing any of these things walking around? I mean, I'm astounded at what we have. I know. That's why you're right. That's the purpose tonight is to help you become more aware of um, all the all the artwork we have around us. Where, Bobby, where is that piece? I'm thinking it is, uh, Kathy Cooney is now in charge. It's in, it's in the Nature Center. Okay, thank I'm, you. I'm not sure. And actually what you can do is go online and the whole uh, catalog of all the, the, um, of the whole collection is online. If you go to the Spring Island website <laughs> under culture, uh, under the trust program, and then under the trust, you can hit the art collection, and then down at the bottom, gives, it'll give you the link to the whole collection. You can find out about the artists. You can find out where they are placed, and so you can do. You can have that too. And if if you can't get to the link, sometimes my computer acts funny and, and it, it won't go to the link. Uh, Tell Pam Burkell. <laughs> she did. She actually does want to know Poor if her Pam. computer is if it's not working correctly. It couldn't be the operator here. <laughs> uh, Brian Rutenberg. Brian uh, was born in South Carolina and but currently lives in New York City. And he is a famous abstract landscape painter. And he uses a, a big palette knife and a big uh, palette, and he uses uh, lots of lots of oils. So these are oils. And um, I was researching a little bit and trying to find um, some interesting thing to tell you. Um, one thing, and we just I just met Jackie from uh, Polly's Island. Well. Uh, he, uh, this Brian, uh, grew up from in Polly's Island, uh, near Polly's Island in Charleston, where the river and the lake merge with the ocean. So anyway, that's where he's from. Um, so he uses a lot of these uh, memories from his childhood in his paintings. But what was interesting uh, reading about him, he did a, he was a Fulbright scholar in Ireland for seven months. And in, in that time, he, he, uh, his, his art was influenced by the Celtic culture of the six, 600 to 400 BC. Mm. And I'll read this to you so you can figure it out. Captivated by the arabesques of pure abstraction, so powerful in the artwork of this period, Brian began using similar merging forms in his work large circular shapes of color transform his canvases into two-dimensional dioramas for, for the viewer, each swirl bringing us closer to what seems to be the center of the drama in the picture. So he uses these strong uh, figures that I guess came from the Celtic uh, culture and then he, he draws your attention into the center. And here it is again. And no. now you can Where see these that? strange, uh, I don't know anything about Celtic, 600 BC Celtic culture, but anyway, um, I take it these, these strong figures are from that. And then you can see he swirls around and draws you into the center. And that's another one. We have three of his. Is the first one still at the God house? So yes. Yeah. Yeah. Bobby, you might explain that the light is so bad, I mean, so different from what the painting is actually like. Yeah, the photograph, it, it is. And this is one you, you've all seen. It's, it's, it's darker. It um, hangs on the uh, wall. 
as you go in, the piano used to sit there. Right. At the golf house. It, no, we're at the golf house, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And um, this one is, I don't, um, I'm not sure where that one is, Kathy, do you know? I can't, I can't remember where that one is, but this one is also in the golf house. And uh, that one, I think, as the, the kitchen door, it's on the wall to the left. So, yes. You know, one of the things he did while he was here as a visiting artist was do um, a, a week of simply uh, pixel drawings. And the, his subject matter was the light coming through the oak trees on both the oak alley and the oak forest. So a lot of these are actually representing a, an abstraction of that those pixel drawings he was doing while he was here. Well, that explains the light, uh, yeah. his titles. So uh, did everybody hear Betsy back there? Oh, okay, good. Um, so that explains why he entitled them uh, the light. Thank you, Betsy. And this is a fun one, Big Mama. So we have um, not only watercolors and um, uh, watercolors and oils and ceramics. We we have the ceramics as well. So they come in um, visiting artists. And sometimes uh, the workshop artists also leave a piece. And Terry Whitner was a workshop artist, and this is a platter. And so she lives in Charleston. And uh, I know um, so many or some of you have taken the workshop that she gave. And this is uh, Michael Wisner, and this is his signature design. And I took a work workshop with him, and even I could do this design. So, um, <laughs> but anyway, this is his signature. And um, I was out in the West and I went into a gallery, an art gallery. And I saw a piece like that, and I asked the lady, I said, is that a Michael Wizard? And she said, oh, yes, he comes by and drops some things off for sale, so I guess he lives out there or has a house out there. <laughs> yeah. oh, beautiful. Wow. Uh, some of these pieces are on the, um, in the golf house on the bookshelf. <clears throat> so you can look through, at some of these there. And of course, everybody recognizes that. <laughs> The defining the views that sits on the piano. And um, Alan Ardsma, some of you have taken the workshop, he is coming back. And um, so if you're interested in, in any of these, you can take the workshop. Mark Manier. And Charles Reed is um, one of the most recognized names in American art today. And he uh, does watercolors. And we have this oil painting back there you can look at as well. And um, his uh, watercolor that we have, um, I think it's in the golf house. Uh, I, Kathy, do you know where the watercolor is? We, all, we can't uh, remember where it is, but anyway, you can look online. But his watercolor, um, what he does after he's finished, he takes his brush and splatters the dots on it. So you can see the dots that he splatters on it. And Bonnie, did, does he do that all the time with his yes, watercolor? he splatters, he hums, he, you know. He's, he's did he give a workshop here, or did you just yes, watch yes, it? Yes, oh, he yes. did give a workshop here. Okay, so I didn't know. So in, what year was that? <laughs> he did a piece of cup landing from the old barge when he did the workshop. Do you remember that? Do we, we have house. it in the collection? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you have it. I do. Oh. Remember the barge that used to come from yeah. Beaufort and go down to Savannah? And he had, remember the photograph over in... Um... And we have... We have other uh, famous artists, Lois Scott, Joellen Dewsbury, and um, they, I didn't get those pictures in. Oh, there's the, there's the watercolor. And um, there, you see the dots on there? So that's, yeah. that's, 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 spattered the dots there. <laughs> and Don Solly, and he's beautiful. Um, I think uh, 
golfers, you can wake up now because I think this is taken from the ninth um, fairway. Is, is that right? Do you think that's set at con? So when your ball, where is that? When your ball, I have to start that. We have no idea you know when you're um, playing golf and you're on the ninth fairway? No, where's, the yeah, where's the art? Where's the art? Uh, it's a pop quiz, Bobby. Pop quiz, okay. You know what? We can go online and take a look. <laughs> you can see my effort. It's um, probably in the golf I Another one by Don Solly. That's in the golf house. And this one's interesting, uh, between two that. sisters. Um, so uh, many of the artists go back to their studios and then they will mail the uh, piece to us later on. So it's always fun to open these, get these it's like Christmas, I open these uh, packages. And so I was curious about between two sisters. I thought that was kind of a strange name. So I called Debbie and asked her, uh, what, why, what does that title mean? She said, well, uh, I was out on a property and it was between Big Sister Pond and Little, little Sister Pond. And, and she said, I saw this um, view. And I said, well, you were on my property. <laughs> and she said, um, so I commissioned her to do a painting for our house. And so um, uh, she's, I have a, one similar to this. And, and so uh, she's coming back again in 2015 to um, do a, a workshop, I believe. And it's, yeah. and it's sitting over here. So, and, but, oh, yeah, there it is. This is the, the actual piece here uh, because it was in the river house, and so now they're in the, the storage closet. Okay, and that's it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs>